news. Good afternoon, the news. Good afternoon, the news. Professor Rennie, you brought the warm weather, but we still feel like we don't, we're not warm enough here. Renewed, God has spared your life. Another day. And Pastor said, we, we are not, we're SDA, we are not sad day, right? So, <laughs> I'm going to say it again, good afternoon, renewed. Amen. Amen. What is our theme for this year? Now remember, if we don't know it, no one else out there will know it, right? So, so we want to memorize this. You know, fortunately for me, at Adventist Healthcare, we are the mission driver, like literally, every reflection, every prayer, everything we do before that is done, this, is, this mission is kind of rehearsed so that people know exactly what they're in and what they're doing, right? So we say that we are renewed. That's the name we give ourselves, right? And we, we thought about this theme prayerfully, the elders, the pastors, and we believe that this is a theme that can take us through this year. But we have to know it. Sister Don, we have to live it. We have to extend this to whoever comes in our pathway. So what is our theme for this year? Lord, thank you so much for blessing us with a faith that will take us beyond our church wall. Bless us through this word. In your name we pray. Amen. Demonstrating our faith. So the last time we spoke, we kind of did a check, right? We did a check to see where we were. I don't know if you remember, but I will give you a snapshot of what we talked about. So again, faith, that is beyond walls means that it's faith that is extended to our community, right? Now let me ask you, how many of you know that there's a Rite Aid somewhere off here? Do you shop in the Rite Aid? Have you extend your faith in Rite Aid? Can somebody say, you know, someone shopped here the other day, and I remember them because they're from Renewed. It doesn't make sense we have a theme if we can't live it. So, you know, it's not just in the church. We have to move beyond the church. So what is our mission and vision? Again, if we have to fake it until we make it, we're going to do it, Pastor. But we need to learn our mission. What is our mission? Creating a? Talk with me, church. Yes? Creating a family of all nations. Now, I want you to look around. I want you to look around. How many Hispanic people are here? I want you to ask yourself a question. It says they're 34%. This was a survey done in um, 2019. 34% of the people in Aspen Hills is actually Hispanic. Do you see anyone beside you that is Hispanic? Don't tell me they have a church down the road. No. This is renewed. How 
How many white people? Caucasian? Come to our church. Again, I'm just checking in. Because again, if we're saying we, we're living this faith behind wall, if we're saying we're, we're creating a family of all nations in Haspen Hill, right? Through growth groups and active growth groups, of, of course. Who are you sharing your recipe with? Who are you taking your walks with? Who are you having dog times with? <laughs> if you go walk your dogs, right? I want you to just picture that. Check out our vision. Come on, let's fake it until we make it. What does the vision say? So we talk about healing relationships. So far, we have been doing awesome in putting on, you know, things at church, the couple seminar, financial seminar. And we're, we're, we're asking, where are the people? Where are the people in the church? Are we saying our relationships are great? Are we saying, hey, you know what? I don't even want to fix mine because I don't want to get to be bothered with other people. Because if we're talking about moving beyond walls, Doc, we're talking about people are going to ask you about you. People are going to want to know about you. And if we have to get away from the culture, Pastor, of saying we're fine. Oftentimes people say, how are you? And I said, I'm fat, I'm fabulous, and I'm favored. And I'm not lying. I, that's how I feel. When you ask me that question, I'm thinking about how I feel. Sometimes I'll say I'm burned out. So I, I want to tell the truth. And I want you to do the same. So healing relationship. It's hard for us, Sister Rosalyn, to heal relationships. If we can't heal ourselves. So just look around again. Look around. How many of these people are missing in the walls of their ministry? Ella Fox, Hebrew 11. Now, faith is the confident in what we hope for and assurance about what we. I want the church to talk with me. Come on now. You have to read with me. Here's a text, though, in Hebrew that I shared with you the last time, which is phenomenal. All these people. Who? All these people. Living by faith when they die. Come on now. They never stop hoping. Even up on their deathbed. Pastor, we will not stop hoping that renewed, will look renewed, even up on our deathbed. Change must come. Change will come. Even if you don't see the change. Let me tell you, friends. Remember, we talk about this church, right? When I came here 10 years ago, this was the basketball uh, court. And we borrowed it to worship in. And, and before, I know people have talked about how long their plan, there were plans out there to build this church. 10 years ago, when did we finish? What year did we finish? Huh? Oh, so you guys even forget already. <laughs> we say we're moving on to new things. That's good. That's renewed. That's good. But we will not stop hoping even till our last breath. 
So here's what we talked about the last time. And I ask you to check yourself. What faith do you demonstrate? Is it a dead faith? Is it a demonic faith? Or is it a pleasing faith? I asked you to think about that the last time. I'm, I'm, I'm thinking you're probably like saying, you know, he's not going to come back with it. But believe me, I will not ho stop hoping until I die. Because I need people in Renewed to have a pleasing faith. A faith that is embedded up on obedience and trust and hope in the coming of the Lord. And if it's so good for you, come on now, why keep it to yourself? Why would you keep it to yourself? So, test yourself. Test yourself. Read with me. Test yourself to make. You are solid in your faith. Don't. Please do not. Give yourself regular checkup. Come on now, friends. Let me tell you. We now start talking about population health, right? Where we're trying to get the, the population healthy. So we, we go, we, do, we, run, we run meetings, you know, seminars and stuff like that, Pastor. We're trying to get our community healthy so the hospital doesn't always packed with people from diabetes, from, you know, uh, different things that happens in our lives, right? But how many times do we check our faith? Do you know who to check your faith with? Have you ever gone to see Dr. Jesus? So, I want us to exercise this. And, you know, with time, I may not be able to delve into all of this with you. But I want us to exercise through a text today. So, read with me real quick. This is 1 Kings chapter 17. And we're going to read a couple uh, verses down, right? So, will you read with me? Sometime later, the brook dries up. And I'm going to give you the context. Because there had been no rain in the land. No rain in the land. Right? Then the word of the Lord came to him who? Elijah, of course. And he says, go at once to... Zarephath in the region of Sidon and Tyre, right? Or Sidon at least. I have directed a widow there to supply you with good food. Jamaican food. Mexican food. We're talking about a renewed church now, right? Huh? Asian food. Right? This is the spot that you need to come to. Pastor Rogers, because all the kind of food you think about is here. All the kind of people is represented here. So any kind of food you want, you can get it here. Amen? So Elijah, because you have to understand who is Elijah, right? Who is Elijah? Elijah are those who God have sent from out there to come to the church for help. I was hungry, you feed me not, right? I was thirsty, Sister Shirley, and you gave me no food. I was hungry, and I was, I was without clothes, and you gave me no clothing. I'm saying to you, somebody's coming your way. Renewed is ready to be shaken up and to be, be, be lined up for God's people to come in here. Are you ready? To receive them. What the text says. So when he went. Come on read with me. So when he went to. When he came to the town gate. A widow was there gathering. He called to her and asked. Would you bring me. A little water in a jar. So that I may have a drink. Read with me. Come on. Oh, you can't. 
Oh, I'm sorry. As she was going to eat it, and you can look that in, in um, 1 Kings chapter 17, right? Put it on the screen because I wanted you to read with me. As she was going to get it, what is it? The water. He called out and said, bring me some. Bring me some Jamaican food. Bring me some Asian food. Bring me something. If it's Chipotle, I'm good with it. If it's Kentucky Fried Chicken, I'm good with it. If it's McDonald's, I'm good with it. Just bring me something to eat. Right? What did she say? As surely as the Lord your God lives. I don't have any bread. Only a handful of flour in the jar. I tell you, I won't have enough time to unpack this with you. But let me just throw this out. What was happening in this time of Elijah's life? Was it a famine or was it a drought? But was it a famine or was it a drought? The Bible said there was a drought. When he showed up, what did he ask for? The first thing was water. It's a drought. There's no water. You know, I've been a farmer for the first, I was going to say the first 20 years of my life. Because technically from one, I have, you know, I watched my parents dig in the yam hill, you know. And then by the time I was able to do that, I noticed that um, we didn't have a famine. We have droughts. Drought is what causes the streams of water to dry up faster, right? And when these streams are dried up, it's either you have to dig down deeper to get to the water table as to where the water is. Because where the surface, where, where the water used to be, that, that is now, um, the water is sand, right? So you have to dig down to where the, now the water table is. To get water spilled back. And I remember used to go into the, the, the spring with my little pan on my head. Anybody used to carry a pan on their head? Uh -huh. And sometimes you have to walk miles. Because sometimes this one will dry up and you already know about someone, some other over somewhere else, right? So, all I'm saying is there's a difference between drought and famine. I will not get into that, but I want you to think about that. What are you experiencing? What is Renewed experiencing right now? Is it a drought or a famine? You, we can talk about it offline. So the lady said, listen, she didn't have a problem giving water. Do you understand what I'm saying to you? We have a drought, which means she should be short on water. But she had water. It wasn't a problem to go get the water. Do you understand what I'm saying? The Holy Spirit is working on you. You don't have a problem about pouring out into others. And then, of course, he said, well, can you bring me some food? widow said, as the Lord liveth, I only have this much. Come on, somebody, when I hear God says, Lily's much when God is in it. I have only this much. How much do you have? What little do you have? What little do you have that can become much when God is in it? Oh, man, I know that I have a little bit of faith, Sister Lou. It tells you that if you have a, just a little bit of faith, 
you can move mountains out of your life. And so all I'm asking you guys today is just to bring your little much and plant it in renew. Because somehow the little becomes much when God becomes a part of it. I'm asking you, friends. Elijah said to her, okay, I hear you. Just go and do what um, you say you were going to do. But please just, just make me a cake first. <laughs> Pastor, I tell you, you know, I sat down and I thought about that. And I'm like, man, sometimes you know, God inspire us. Not just pastor, all of us. But sometimes there are some criminal Christians out there. You see, God didn't have to bless the lady because Elijah eat first. Let me ask you, because, you know, I, <laughs> being a father of two now and they're still the little kids. Mothers, let me ask you first. If this was the case, God spoke to you. Because it, it, the Bible tells us that God told Elijah that I have command, I have directed a widow to take care of you, right? That's the context here. Now, if you have the last little amount of flour, and oil, Mother Night, the last little flower and oil. My mom, where is she? Because I know that this is, these are the people I'm talking The last little flower and oil. And God said, you have to feed this family. What would you do? You know, I'm going to say to you guys, before you jump and just say, hey, feed them. Be careful of committing spiritual perjury. And I'm saying that because when we're not in the situation, we tend to just bam and speak. And we would probably want to judge this lady and stuff. She's like, listen, if I give you this food, remember... I'm going to just make this and then we're going to die. That's what she said. Only had enough pastor for two. So before we just say, yeah, this is it. Let's think about it, friends, because I'm talking about checking ourselves. That's what I'm asking you to do today. Remember, what kind of faith do you display? Everybody want to be pleased in faith. But if everybody is pleased in faith, let me ask you, look around. Why are we struggling to have elders to work in the church? Why do we struggle to have deacons to clean the church? Why do we have people who are locking to give Bible studies and prayer and, and visit the, um, the home bones? Why do we have people who are not able to do redemptive visits? Pastor, talk to me now. If you have pleasing faith, this place will be packed. We have to think about another place to build because God people needs a home to be in. We are not ready yet. It's fine. You don't have to like me when I say that. But if you're searching yourself, you realize you're not ready yet. You're not ready for God to use you yet. Many of us would say, let's, let's break the thing together. Let's share it. Let's do what we want to do first. Because our faith are measured by our human faculties. Our faiths are measured by the senses and the senses we have 
that, 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 that's hanging out there. God is going to do this if I do this. And I need to make sure that I have this prepared and this prepared. But that's not faith, friends. Faith is unrealistic. Faith requires you to do even when you don't know what the outcome is going to look like. Sister Phyllis, you did it 20 years ago. And I know it's coming back and it looks hard and it feels like this is impossible. But I'm saying have faith in God because if he had done it once for you, he can do it again for you. Why are we limited in our spiritual resources, Pastor? Why are we ineffective, unsuccessful in, in the Hasman Hill? Why is our faith taken up residency here in the walls of Renewed Church, except uh, and not extended into our community? Why do we struggle with helping the poor, the orphaned, the widow? in our church, and in its diaspora. Pleasing faith requires us to have a reliable faith. When God says, move, we move just like that. No questioning, no arguing. You move just like that. I only have enough, sir, to eat and to die. I want to examine Elijah's faith. And I know we don't have much time, but remember, this is a series. I will always come back to this because I, I don't want to let go of it. I want you to talk to your neighbor. Here are three things I want to measure Elijah's faith with. Take half a second, and as you reflect on the story, ask yourself, how did Elijah listen, trust God, and obey God? Speak. I want you to talk. Come on. Talk to each other. 30 seconds. I hope you learn something new. I hope you learn something new. Let's take another 30 seconds, and I want you to evaluate the widow's response. How did she listen? How did she trust? And how did she Now is the time I want to hear people talking. Come on, don't whisper, talk. It's okay. So, 
we're going to have to come back to the story because there's so much good is in this sermon. I'm telling you that it's hard to walk away from. Hear me, church. Hear this one point I want to leave with you with. God directed her to care for Elijah. What is she doing picking up sticks when the food should already be prepared and warm, put down pastor, ready for the prophet to come and eat? I want you to think about it. God, is, God wants some people to come into this church. But we're not ready for it yet. We're still distracting ourselves doing what we want to do. Be where we want to be. But God is saying prepare. Prepare for what is to come. Friends, we need faith that is resistant to overcome the wiles of the devil. We do need a faith which is persistent in chasing after God for his righteousness. We need a faith that is benevolent, that is, it acts justly, it acts righteously, and it acts, um, and it's there for us. For the taking. We need a faith that is transferable. A faith that moves beyond these walls. Move beyond this road right up here that we drove to come in. Move my friends into the heart of the community. So that people can taste and see. That the Lord that you have been tasting is good. And they would come running to the throne of grace. Because something is good inside here at Renewed. God has invested in us his divine mandate. Go in therefore, teach all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost. Amen? Did it stop there? It says, no, teaching them to observe all things for what I've commanded you. And lo, I'm with you always, even until the end of the world. Friends, let me tell you, this water is troubling. It's waiting. Let's build another pool. Let's build another church because God will move. Whether we like to move or not, God will move in renewed church.